All right, welcome back, guys. We've got another Spotlight Series Top 5. This week it is Con Week. All right, I'm sorry, I couldn't, couldn't resist. And uh, so uh, since this is most, this is uh, really a second edition week, I have, uh, so I have uh, my good friend Al Shaver here who has been tearing it up locally with a con deck. So um, welcome, Al. Thank you for taking time to uh, come and chat with us about uh, the con faction. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, let's get into your top five. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. Um, so I've got, I've got uh, up here to start out your uh, your number five card. This is the one that uh, makes makes us go, as it were. So tell us a little bit about To Rule in Hell. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to Rule in Well, when I was picking out my list, I wanted to try and pick one card of each uh, card type, get a different card type for each pick. Uh, to Rule in Hell, obviously, like you said, makes everything go. It's... Uh, any any card in the game that changes, you know, the basic rules or the win conditions is, is definitely worth a look. And this this is what uh, makes it all happen. It's uh, definitely uh, looks like Voyager, sounds like Voyager, but it's definitely not Voyager. You know, you're stuck with all planet. You don't have a headquarters, uh, and you've got uh, no way of getting a, a ship out of the deck the way uh, the way the card reads. But uh, you know, there's other card. There's the Joaquin that lets that happen. And uh, this this definitely uh, makes things kind of changes the scope of the game right before you even draw your opening hand. So it's uh, it's a cool card to have, uh, changes the game, like I said, and uh, it, it sets the table for for a different kind of game. Yeah, that's 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 uh, that is for sure true. Uh, and you know, I have always been puzzled. I mean, it's it's a it's a cool concept having the um, having the all planet sort of um, symmetry, uh, you know, to, with, uh, with Voyager and, uh, Equinox, uh, where you can do all, all space. Um, but I have always kind of wondered about, about this one. Why, why 120 points was chosen for it? I don't think anybody's really come on the board to talk about like why, why that was set as the threshold, because I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually do four planet missions and have 120 points for this because Genesis planet exists. Yeah, exactly. It's but it, it, it is definitely an interesting concept. I'm not usually a big fan of alternate wind conditions, but this is, this is a, uh, I think this is a pretty high enough bar that, you know, it makes it all right. Yeah. I, I was wondering about the 120 points myself and I was trying to, uh, remember back to how all the cards kind of released because I think uh, I think this was really the the CC's first crack at, at like a, a full affiliation and and but still kind of a sub affiliation you know you know whereas I think uh, when when they'd really tried to turn up the, the notch on Tarek Nor and Ruling Council came out that kind of became super powerful like almost immediately and I was just wondering like if they were trying to avoid going from like zero to eleven with to rule in hell and kind of temper it with the 120 and and see see what happened and from there. Yeah, that, that could be a that could that could certainly be a very plausible explanation for that. All right, so let's go on to your next one. We've got up here, uh, Regula. Yeah, Regula is uh, is definitely a, a con centered mission. Uh, it's it's got all the skills uh, or three of the skills that are on. Uh, Khan Superior Sleeper, so it's obviously made for him. And then the text, of course, is what makes the uh, the Genesis planet the uh, the target or the next uh, the next mission in the in the game. There, uh, giving it the extra five points, you 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 don't end up five points short by doing uh, Regula and SETI Alpha Five and Genesis planet. You get those bonus five to pay for blowing it up. And uh, you know it's it's a great card, and and, and really the the theme of Terul and Hell. The whole con concept uh, and playing the deck uh, is one of my has become one of my favorites just because it is so uh, fanboyish and that it, it it follows. There's a, there's a lot of good con elements. And it really takes you back to the movie. Everything that's that's in this deck right now that I've been playing for a while is you know really serves you as as a fan. You know, there's a lot of great uh, collectible card games out there, but you know, the reason that I've stuck with Decipher-based games is, you know, I, have, I feel like I have a connection 
with you know Star Wars and Star Trek and Lord of the Rings and things like that, then uh, when you when you have a deck that that gives you that connection, it, it's more than just a game. You know, you, you really feel like you're you're doing something special. Yeah, and you don't get that as much in, in second edition where uh, where you feel like you've got that Trek sense moment. So that that is that is pretty awesome that is that that's there. I you know I'm, I'm always hoping that there will be more personnel that they pull from the Wrath of Khan. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and like I said, you know, Regulus steers you towards Genesis planet and and in the in that movie, you know, the Genesis is is the Death Star of Wrath of Khan. You know, it's the most powerful thing in the universe. They don't want it to get in that, the wrong hands and and blowing up that Genesis planet at the end of the game is extremely satisfying and, and it's and it's well earned, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, that is, a, that is a very tough mission. This one, not, you know, cutting greater than 32 with your genetically enhanced, you just, you need five people for that. Exactly. Yeah. All right, then. So let's go on to number three. Yeah, Space Seed, uh, an all-planet dilemma. It, it basically comes out to cost one or cost zero, depending on what the state of the game is at the time and how many genetically enhanced you have out there. It's extremely difficult for uh, the opponents to to pass it. You know, the strength greater than 40, two telepathy or cunning greater than 40. You know, those are all pretty uh, pretty high uh, uh, requirements for anybody. Uh, and especially with this dilemma coming at the end of a stack and, and costing virtually nothing uh, is, is pretty uh, difficult for people to overcome. And then, uh, like I said, this is another one that really uh, serves the fan and serves the, the theme of the movie where you you pretty much get two free people to join Khan's minions. Uh, you know, they've got a little bug in their ear now and they come to SETI Alpha 5 and they're they're all yours to do what you want to do with. And it's, uh, it's an amazing card that helped out the deck uh, immensely. I, I always say, you know, it gave the deck some teeth because now uh, one of the weaknesses of the deck is the uh, limited people that you have to, uh, to put in the deck to solve missions. And now if you run into that, uh, uh, you know, uh, all-consuming evil deck. You know, you've got you've got some warm bodies coming over to uh, to help serve you when you when you run into that buzzsaw dilemma uh, stack. So it's it's really really great. It's uh, gives that uh, draw deck dilemma pile synergy, and like I said, it's it's total fan service, and I, I love the card. And a great picture too, like that the you know the the reveal moment. Oh with, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> with, exactly. with Chekhov is just like that the, great artwork where yeah where he's yeah. just like oh no and you you get that from your opponent too when they see that come up it's like oh no and then they keep reading and then it's like oh no <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> all right then we've uh so next one we're going to move on to the the most recent uh con helper card yeah, this this interrupt moment of triumph, uh, like immediately replaced graph plating trap in my decks. Uh, it's it's fantastic. It gives you that that next level of defense to uh, take out uh, whatever kind of speed component or event or shenanigans that your opponent's going to use uh, to their benefit or your detriment. And it it's almost free to play because of the uh, cost of the people that you're going to have in the game. And then you know you can still keep your like I was using emergency transporter unit to power my grav plating traps. Well, there were plenty of games where I'd rather have used that uh, ETU to uh, save a body that was snipered out by some dilemma or another, uh, especially Khan. If, if Udar or Eric Soon wasn't on the table, you know, that ETU would have come in real handy. But now with Moment of Triumph, you're not burning your, your equipment to, uh, to, to uh, save bodies or, or to kill events. You're, you're using just the interrupt to kill the event and just using the natural state of the people that you got in play. And the, uh, the one thing that I wanted to, that I noticed that I didn't really quite plan on when I picked out these top five was that, uh, you know, to rule in hell came from set 29 in 2013 regular came in set 36 in 2015 space seed came out last year and moment of triumph came out this year. So it's like this deck has gotten a little bit of love, uh, every year and a half or so, and it's just, it's gotten better and it's gotten better, but it hasn't gotten like overpowered in any sense of the way. So it's, and it's interesting too, the, the people that were working on those sets are all almost all totally different people. There is almost no overlap between the designers of the sets. So it's really, 
really impressive when when I was reviewing these and making my notes for this this uh, talk tonight that uh, I, I don't know if there was like a grand plan from the beginning or if it just kind of worked out that way or or how uh, the design teams uh, put it all together but you know looking at it all and, and the years that it took place and and the, the elements that have gone into it I, I was just really impressed and really uh, uh, wanted to say great job by all the design teams that worked on these cards yeah, um, yeah I, and I, this particular interrupt, I, I like it a lot too for the, you know, that it, um, it is specific to an affiliation, which I always feel I, I like those kinds of cards better than things that are more generic, like grab plating trap. Right, exactly. You know, it gives you that, uh, that feel that this deck is part of, of Khan. And, you, and like you said, with the artwork on the last card and this card, it's just as good. I mean, at that point in the movie, he's he's holding all the cards and he's he's gonna you know take Kirk out and win the day, you know. Yep. All right, then to your number one card. Yeah, my number one card probably uh, not gonna be you know kind of a surprise to some people. I'm sure everybody's thinking that Khan is is obviously the number one for to rule in hell, but uh, you know if you've tried to play this deck in any way, shape, or form, uh, you know. You know that Udar comes in and and saves the day more often than not. I mean, just when you're run into that rough dilemma stack, and and you know Khan is a, a pretty easy target because he's got skills that a lot of the other guys in the deck don't have. So he's easy to single out and he's easy to be selected. And uh, whenever that happens, you know you you want to keep him on the table. And Udar especially is a great way of doing that. Eric Sung is is you know certainly runner up in that in that regard. And, uh, you know, the weaknesses of the deck, the, the skills that you need and the, the people that you need to have on the table, um, you know, Udar and uh, Eric Soon help keep those people on the table and, and make it happen. I, I typically don't play uh, Joe Keen down to uh, SETI Alpha 5 until either Udar or Eric Soon or an ETU or some combination of the three is on the table to keep him protected because he's another easy target that's going to screw you over for a couple turns while you dig for another one to get another ship you know cons great that you get the double downloads but you know you want to you want to get them on the table early and you want to get them get things going uh having to play them again especially later in the game you can't afford to fly back from genesis planet to uh seti alpha five in one turn it's it'll it's a two-turn trip so you know udar and eric sung and your etus are are extremely important to keep your your players on the table and to make a, to get those missions done, uh, you know this the thing that keeps this deck from really being, uh, you know, a tier one or a tier one point five kind of deck is that you're you're susceptible to modified wins and modified losses because you don't have that space mission to get the uh, to get the uh, space planet going. So, uh, you know, you want to keep the people on the table that you need to uh, solve your missions, and uh, you know, Udar's MVP nine times out of ten. Yeah, he. He, I, I will put this out there. He wrecked my capture strategy <laughs> at our last tournament. Yep. Absolutely wrecked it because you know, you're like, uh, all right, unfair, you know, our, uh, uh, b -b 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 the inequitable exchange. Oh, yeah, here, have Udar. You want to play that again? Oh, well, you can pick somebody, but it's going to be Udar again. Oh, yeah, you want to play? Uh, okay, you know, so I thought, all right, well, with Udar, that's fine. I'll use him because I'd followed up uh, inequitable exchange. So uh, with um, broken captive, and you're like, uh, nope, I'm gonna hit you with Silic. I'm gonna use Silic to gain honor, and I'm just like, Gah! <laughs> yep. There's there's a lot of fun things going on in the deck, but you know, it's everything's got to be hitting on all cylinders to 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 knock out that full win. And uh, when you hit some bumps in the road, you know, it it definitely makes it a challenge and that's where, you know, Space Seed buys you that extra time and, and gives you some extra bodies and makes it that much more difficult on your opponent. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. Just to pop up here, honorable mentions. I'm going to put my honorable mentions, Silic being one of them, because he is uh, he plays in this deck quite nicely, and he has a dial a skill, and that is just fantastic. Yep. You, know, you can gain a skill that is required by the Dilemma, so that's that is great. Um, and of course, we've got Khan here. As you said, you like to get him out first, you know, early if if and when possible. Uh, his, 
uh, in our last tournament, I was just reading your tournament report. You got to go second all three rounds. Oh, that's so a you got con out first turn every time. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, getting con that first turn, I, I, I've been getting into the habit of downloading the uh, uh, surprise party and then uh, the uh, Delta Flyer to throw that in the lost pile right away. I mean, obviously, when, when you play against the same people, you kind of, you know, recognize or kind of assume that, you know, people aren't going to be playing some of the cards that are really going to screw you over. You know, I don't just uh, do that every single time, but, you know, especially if you suspect, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ducat to be in there, you know, greasy Ducat to get rid of the ship right away. You certainly don't want to do that. But uh, mm -hmm. getting eight counters off the bat on on turn two is is great for this deck. It's it's really fantastic, and making that happen every game it just really makes your day. <laughs> All right. Well, let's stop the screen share. There we are. All right. So thanks again, Al Schaefer, uh, Lieutenant Catch. You know, I never know what you're. Uh... Yeah, healthy catch seventeen on the uh, on the boards. I always wondered if it was lieutenant or just LT. It, it is, yeah. It's it's a character from a from a book. So. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> well, Al, thanks again. So I haven't read that book. Yeah. I learned a thing today. There you go. I've known, I've known Al for over a decade now, and I was never sure. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all for viewing our top five series, uh, top five con for the spotlight series. I will see you guys all next time. I believe it is top five Vulcan week next time. All right. Thanks.